Let's get you over to Colliersville, Tennessee. Officials are giving an update on yesterday's deadly shooting at Kroger's. Let's listen. The one uh, fatality that we had, Miss Olivia King. And so uh, I ask that you remember the King family uh, in your prayers. I want to give you a, an update on uh, the victims. Uh, we received information earlier that, and we were able to confirm that we uh, have the number of shot is 15 now. Um, they're in stable condition. Uh, thankfully, our prayers were answered. We didn't lose anybody overnight. There's still some people that are battling, so continue to pray for them as well. Um, tell you just some real quick things about the shooter. Um, I'm not going to give you his name today. I'm not giving him notoriety in this platform, but Major David Townsend will provide anybody that wants his name shortly after this briefing, okay? So we're just not going to do it in this venue. Um, one of the other things that, that uh, some of you have asked me about is, uh, was he an employee? He was a third-party vendor for Kroger. Um, so with that, I wanted to just update you on where we are in the investigation, what has taken place since our last news conference. If you remember yesterday when we talked, we, were, we had two active situations that were going on. And uh, you, you remember the vehicle that we talked about. Uh, we had EOD teams from ATF, Sheriff's Bomb Squad, MPD, and uh, they made sure that there were no explosives associated with that and a package that was uh, actually a backpack that was on the shooter. And there were no, uh, no explosives involved in this. Um, the next thing that we had going last night was uh, CPD detectives, Sheriff SWAT, uh, FBI evidence response team, executed a search warrant at 885 Federal Ridge Road, number 102. Um, right now, evidence the evidence that was taken from that location is being processed to include all electronic evidence. Today, we're continuing processing the scene behind us. It's going on, this should go probably late afternoon, maybe even into the evening hours. And uh, so we're very thankful for our partners that's been here to help us Thankful for our community too. I uh, hope you all saw the number of people in this community that showed up to support yesterday. Whether it was local pastors praying, restaurant owners providing food, uh, it is much appreciated. Um, one of the things that, uh, that I've talked to several people about is, yes, this is a terrible tragedy, but there is so many things that, uh, that did go well yesterday that prevented additional loss of life. Uh, there's a couple of things that I want to highlight in particular. One is as we entered that building and uh, it was very obvious that the employees and even the customers uh, knew what to do. There was run, hide, fight. They, they secured themselves. I told you yesterday, we removed people from freezers, closets, hiding between pallets of groceries. Um, but they did what they had to do until we could get in there to help them. The second thing I want to highlight in that is that there was no delay in getting medical attention to them. Um, I've been doing this for 35 years, 34 years, and this is the first time in my career that I have seen firemen wearing ballistic helmets and vests. Now, I told you yesterday that we did a training exercise that was June the 4th. That was uh, Germantown, uh, MPD, Sheriff's Office, Carryville, law enforcement, but also Carrierville Fire was integrated into that and there's no doubt in my mind that that training served us well yesterday. So I want to commend Chief Billings and his team. Um, I think that's, uh, that's where I'm going to leave it now. We'll open it up for questions. Anybody behind me that, uh, that I've listed is available for questions. So we'll start out there. Yes, sir, Daryl. Darrell, we're getting a, a clearer picture of what's occurred, but I'm not ready to release that yet. We need to go through and make sure that, uh, again, just as I said yesterday, we want to make sure that we, we dot the I's and cross the T's in this, and as soon as we're able, we will release the information we have. Chief, there were a Davidson County tag on that suspect car. What's the connection to Nashville? Um, that's part of the investigation. Uh, we'll confirm some information on that a little bit later. Chief, was the individual fired from his job? Um, I, I'm not, I don't have that information at this point. That's something that we probably can refer back to uh, Kroger, uh, but we'll try to get you that information. Some of the employees here are saying that he was a disgruntled employee. Do you 
Arnold employee that was walked out earlier in the day yesterday. Can you confirm that? No, I'm not in a position where I'm going to confirm that. We're, we're Again, we're continuing on with the investigation. Yes, sir. Chief, what's, I uh, look ahead, what's next for you all in the, today and the days ahead in this investigation? Well, for us, it's to continue this this scene and take our time to make sure that we do it right. And then for me and, and, and our team at CPD is to make sure that we get them the emotional support that's coming through critical stress debriefings um, and our assistance from partners across the state. Um, what will what, happen is officers that have been involved in similar incidents will come here. They will uh, be able to talk it out with our officers, kind of let them know some of the emotional impacts that they're going to see over the coming weeks and so we're going to make sure our team gets the the help that they need chief can you talk to yes. us about the first responders that quickly jumped into action and are there any that may be available to speak with us uh, we can make some available for you um, I, when you talk about first responders you can just about look at any blue uniform that's out here um, from the command staff members um, you know at the, at the moment that that went out our sole priority was neutralizing any potential threat and putting ourselves between the subject and any potential victims. And so we were in a command staff meeting and uh, the way it worked out, based on information that was coming from the scene, our command staff was one of the first, some of the first coming in the front of the building. We had officers coming in from the back. But uh, so it, it, at that moment, it's all about stopping the threat. I know, I know you are obviously, uh, you don't want to talk about the shooter, but can you talk about the weapon he used? And then you have ATF on the scene. You want to talk about any of that at all? We're, uh, I do not, not at this point. We're still going through, that's part of the investigation and uh, we will release that uh, in the in the coming weeks. But uh, right now, this, it's not the time. We're less than 24 hours. Do you know if it's legally purchased yet, the weapon or? We'll talk about that here in the, in the coming weeks. Chief, Chief, you said 15 have been shot. Does that include Mrs. King as well as part yes. of the 15? Yes. Chief, more on the motive, do you know if these were a random selection from what we've been hearing from people who work inside of here about a Well, I mean, that's that's definitely an avenue that we're looking at. But now we don't want to speculate. I don't want to tell you something today and then have to come back to you tomorrow and tell you that that we didn't get it right. So if you'll if you'll bear with me, we'll uh, at some point we'll we'll make that information available. Chief, can you talk about the emotional state of your officers, those firefighters, the other agents who responded to that yesterday? I mean, hey, we I think I can speak for all of them. We have broken hearts. Yeah. You know, nobody wants to go into that scene, I can promise you. And so, you know, we you, you do what you have to do. And, and we talked about this yesterday. I mean, there were bloody people running out of that building and there was not one blue uniform that hesitated. I mean, from the bottom all the way up, we're in there uh, trying to help. Gee, so, at, what point did, at what point did the shooter take his own life? Um, well, it wasn't too long. I mean, it was uh, as we were pulling up to the scene. Um, it, it, to my knowledge, um, it happened really quickly. And if you look at historically, usually that's what happened is as law enforcement's making the scene in many of these cases, that, that uh, usually is when the shooter will take their life. So that's what we believe happened yesterday. So it's really quick. Hold, hold, hold up just a second. You had a chance to watch the video on the inside of the store. Do you, do you I have not had the chance to watch the video. Okay. Can you tell us about how long the ordeal was? You said it was very quick. What's very quick? Um, well, we, I told you yesterday that our first call on the radio was four minutes later. Um, actually, uh, I found out after the briefing that one of our cars was flagged down in the parking lot by a citizen who said there's shooting going on at Kroger. And he pulled into the lot, was trying to find what was going on. He didn't know if it was in the parking lot or where it was. He was actually in this parking lot as soon as the call went out, and then immediately cars begin coming into the area. Um, but it was it, it was over in a matter of minutes. I mean, probably a couple of minutes, I would say, from the time that our first car started getting here, sirens were coming, and that's when we believed that uh, that he took his own life.